working with people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, that kind of that core value, I think, in organizations today is really important. I, I also talk a, uh, about this in the book, the importance of building open systems. That's organizations that are able to assimilate information uh, from uh, various centers of innovation and to incorporate those really quickly into products and services. The organizations that we build today in the United States tend to be hierarchical. They tend to be pyramid structures. Better organizations, future organizations should be more like a biological cell where you have lots of uh, information coming in um, and and being assimilated and, and worked through and finally incorporated into, into the, the organism. And those things that are bad, you kind of kick out and those things that are good, you, you, you make a part of the system. Intellectual property is really the intangibles around your business that make it what it is. So when you think about a, a, a name, uh, a brand, um, human-generated content, these are things, anything that comes out of the mind of, of humans can be protected in intellectual property, anything that's affixed in a medium. So companies... I know small businesses, big businesses, they tend to focus on products and services. They tend to focus on what am I selling and protecting what I'm selling. But behind that uh, are rights that need to be protected. And when they're not protected, you run into issues where people can steal <laughs> and people can copy. Uh, so IP is integral. It's part and parcel of running a good business. When I worked at Coca-Cola, one of the very first cases that I had to work on was uh, an inventorship dispute. And uh, at issue uh, was a, a patent, uh, a novel gas barrier additive that Coca-Cola included inside of its, uh, its plastic bottles that extends the shelf life of carbonated drinks. So if you come up with this amazing uh, uh, container that can keep sodas really fizzy for a long period of time. Um, that would be protected by the idea of, of patents. Uh, on the other side of that, you have trademarks. And one of the, uh, a really strong trademark um, is uh, apple, for example. So an apple, it's, 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 it's a, a fruit, right? But, but in the context of technology, Apple is a company and, and a company that makes really great products. copyrights. So with, with the advent of AI, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. um, these AI systems are trained on content and content is generated primarily by people. And so uh, if you are an author uh, and you write a book, mm -hmm. that content is protected by copyright. And so um, to prevent others from taking it and using it in ways that uh, you would you know, object to, it's important to protect those things. And probably the least known and least used form of intellectual property is, is trade secret. They are their know-how, their, mm -hmm. their confidential business information uh, that gives you a competitive advantage that other companies don't have. Though that's a form of, of knowledge, of intellectual property that can be protected. Through the pandemic, I realized that by being a part of Operation Warp Speed, that was the Trump administration's uh, push to deliver medicines and vaccines around the world, it gave our employees a North Star. It was something that said, hey, we are part of a movement to save the world. The whole idea, the slogan, um, it's a patient, not a package, was was really motivating during that time for, for the high performance that we saw. And we actually create, we actually, um, from a metrics perspective, were the, the, the most uh, safe and effective uh, airline during, during that period of time. Conduct audits, regularly review and document the IP assets that are available to you. And, you know, talk about patents, trademarks, copyrights, trade secrets, even designs, right? So patents come in utility and design flavors, designs, you know, how something looks, 
Uh, so look at your talk to your team again within the context of an open system. Bring people together, regional whiteboarding sessions, um, um, actually going to folks who you know within your organization that have great ideas and say, hey, we want to just sit down and, and put some of these ideas on paper. Um, that's the first step in in going about securing those rights that you're you're looking looking to secure and do it regularly. Like if it's, it's quarterly or yearly, that kind of thing and keep a book. And it's just a, a, a record of those ideas that have been captured. Register your, your intellectual property. Now there's some, there's some IP that you have protection from the minute that it's created. Copyright, for example, you write something down, it's your, you, you create a story. The minute that they put pen to paper and they create that story, there is copyright protection. But there are other ways of registering that IP. You can register a copyright once a work is completed with the copyright office. Uh, you can register, you can file a patent application to protect an invention. These are things that you should do because they create enhanced protections for you. Uh, sometimes they are notice pr protections that puts the world on notice that you are the owner of this thing. Uh, and sometimes there are their enhanced damages protection. So if someone does steal uh, your IP or copies your work, you are able to get, you know, sometimes three times the amount of damages as a result. I really encourage small businesses to engage in NDA practice, and that's non-disclosure agreements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Create a standard non-disclosure agreement and use it routinely. Um, it put, put NDA provisions in your employee agreements when they onboard and, and, um, and ensure that they are, they're time bound and they're reasonable. Um, they relate to the work that the person is doing. All of it is about being reasonable, but ensure that you are protecting those things. It's, it, and especially not just with employees, but also with vendors. I should also say when you have vendors, if they're coming onto your property, <laughs> make sure vendors have NDAs because, you know, your vendors walking through, they, you know, people might have confidential information sitting on uh, tables or desks. And it's very easy these days to just snap a picture with your mm -hmm. cell phone of confidential information. So make sure that your, your NDAs are in place and are protecting your information in that way. Monitor and enforce your IP rights. It, it, what the, An IP right is no good if it is not protected and enforced. So if you uh, have copyrights, ensure that you are sending cease and desist letters when you believe someone is infringing, that you are engaging with competent counsel that can negotiate um, either the takedown of, of things that are infringing, uh, your trademarks or any other IP rights. Ensure that you are looking and policing because what ends up happening um, is there's a, a theory in the law that, you know, if you uh, don't protect your rights, you lose your rights. So um, if you, for example, know that someone is infringing your trademark and you don't do anything to enforce it, well, if you go for a, a sufficient period of time without doing it, you may lose some protections And I've seen this many times. You've got people out in the field. They're working in an, an operating environment, a warehouse or a factory or something. They come up with some, you know, uh, some fix to a problem that is just a practical fix because they are, you know, necessity is the mother of all inventions. They have created a unique, efficient way of doing it, and nobody knows about it except two or three managers inside that that factory. And it it, it could be a uh, a solution that every factory would uh, could use and create economies of scale. And we just don't we just don't know about it because employees aren't educated in like who to contact when they come up with something that's that's good like that implement security measures, um, use, use technical measures like uh, encryption and access controls to safeguard your IP and your data. This is really important when it comes to trade secrets because trade secrets, if they are, if they're not protected, they can, they can be lost. Typically, if you lose a trade secret, the damages are so incalculable they can't be they really can't be recovered because the idea is that only a few people know the trade secret and if more people know the secret then it's really is it valuable anymore <laughs>
If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe. And to stay updated on everything that the Action Catalyst is up to, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Action Catalyst Podcast and on Twitter at Catalyst underscore Action. And thanks for listening.